Yeah, we back. Now today, man, we're going to talk about it. The manipulation tactics of the fake pro-black female. Now last night, man, I dropped a video entitled, take a look up on the screen, Dr. Umar Johnson vs. Ebony K. Williams, the bus driver debate. And in that video, I reacted to a piece of content put out by Dr. Umar Johnson where he was speaking his mind in terms of the entire drama and fiasco surrounding Ebony K. Williams and her comments regarding bus drivers, blue collar workers, etc, etc. Now my position is a bit unique and out of the ordinary because I don't really have a problem with a woman saying she wants the top of the top, she wants the cream of the crop. In my opinion, that's normal. That's evolutionary biology. What I had a problem with was the fact that a lot of women, black women in particular, they believe that the successful black man, the elite black man, the high performing black man, he's supposed to accept anything and everything that comes on his doorstep like he's a goddamn garbage collector. Now the video I put out last night, it went crazy. I only got 4,000 subscribers and the video got over 20,000 views and still climbing. And in my commentary surrounding this situation, I didn't really condemn Ebony K. Williams for desiring what she desires. I condemned her for her double-minded hypocrisy, her schizophrenic ideology where I'm talking black, black power, black power, but at the same time, behind closed doors, I'm laying up with white men. I'm getting on my knees for white men. I can't really get down with that. And then you want to come back around and say, I only want the top of the top black man, the cream of the crop black man. And a lot of black women came into my comment section and they seemed to agree with that ideology. For some reason, a lot of them seemed to believe that they should be able to get in bed with the European, have intimate relations with the European, and still be eligible for the cream of the crop black man, the top 5%, top 3%, top 1% black man, and be able to start a family and raise black children. And I grabbed the microphone, I stood on top of the mountaintop, and I rebuked that, and I reject that. And in fact, this lady came into my comment section, she comments on my videos a lot, she said this, I hope you are working on the next video, which should be about how black men should be the world's garbage man, according to many black women in the comment section. And in today's video, we're going to jump into some of those comments. But last night on my community tab, I asked my audience, take a look up on the screen. Is it wrong for black men to reject black women who talk pro-black and sleep white? The ones who scream black power, but their actions say white power. And we got almost 200 votes and over 90% of the votes said no. Black men should avoid them. They suffer from mental illness. Now, 8% of y'all apparently said it's wrong for us to have standards and, and requirements and, and, and put up boundaries. You said it's wrong. They are queens. I understand. I get it. Everybody's entitled to their opinion. Now, one lady actually came into my comment section and she said this. I think it's wrong because black men on a whole are not race loyal themselves compared to black women who are significantly more loyal to the race when it comes to who they choose to be with. So it's not only hypocritical, but it's asking black women to remain single while the majority of black men date out. If black men loved black women as much as black women love black men, then yes, but that doesn't seem to be the case. Now, number one, y'all know me, man. That fake pro-black garbage, that fake pro-black propaganda, it doesn't work on me. I reject that shit on sight. As soon as a black woman come around talking about, we love black men, I'm, I'm down for the black man, I wanna, I'm riding for the black man, y'all know it don't work on me. I be telling these chicks, fuck out my face with that shit. Try that shit on the next man, it don't work on Nefakari Desaline, you hear me? Now maybe she's new to my channel, but I've already mentioned, I don't even date outside my race. So when I ask these questions, I'm speaking from the perspective of a black man who does not date outside his race, a black man who's not a bum, a black man who does not come from the struggle, a black man who comes from a lineage of black excellence, as they call it. So a lot of these talking points, it doesn't apply to me. So I reject that on sight because number one, there is no way to calculate race loyalty, right? She says black women, black men date outside the race more. How can you calculate who people are dating? Who is collecting that data? For example, I was out last night up in the city, up in Manhattan, and I met a new chick last night. Now, I'm going to ask you guys, you guys in the audience, when a man meets a new woman or when a woman meets a new man, who is collecting that data on the race of that person, the background of that person, the religion of that person? Who is collecting that data? For example, you meet a chick on a dating app or Instagram or, or Twitter or whatever, or out in the street, at the gym, at the bank. Who is collecting the data of the racial background of the chick to say black men are dating out more? Who is dating out more? That is a fake piece of propaganda bullshit. Nobody is calculating who is dating out more. Black women just tell themselves that bullshit. These fake pro-black women. I'm not going to say all pro-black women. We're talking about the fake pro-black, black power, black power. We love black men so much. No, you don't. You run a game and unfortunately for you, it's not going to work on this channel. The only data available to calculate who is dating who is marriage because that type of information is certified by the government. But in terms of just casual dating, 
smashing, having a good time. Nobody knows what is happening behind closed doors. That is why these fake pro-black women, they can hide behind all this nonsensical propaganda and talking points, even though they themselves, they run around with the European 100 miles per hour. And as long as they don't get married, which the vast majority of them will never get married to the European, because like I said, men of status, men of high status, they keep it inside the race. So most of them will never get married to the European. So because of that fact, they can hide behind the fake propaganda and they hide behind the marriage stats. But I guarantee if you were able to register the casual dating statistics, what's happening on these dating apps, what's happening behind closed doors, I guarantee the data and the facts would look a lot different when you take away the marriage stats because the marriage rates are going down. So that's not a reliable metric to use when measuring what's happening out in the dating landscape. But here's a piece of advice for my brothers. Whenever a woman comes up to you saying black men date out more, stop and ask them, how do you register who is dating who? Who is keeping track of that? Who is keeping track of that information? The government, the CDC? When you meet a new chick, do you submit that data to the government? That's why I say, my brothers, they're trying to run game on you. And they're counting on the fact that you're too stupid to put two and two together. Only a stupid man falls victim to this fake pro-black rhetoric that comes out their mouth. Only a stupid man. Only a weak man. Because if they were so race loyal, I always say it. You know how we hold black men accountable? When a black man dates outside the race, everybody comes and lays down fire and brimstone upon him, lays down judgment upon him. But when the black woman does it, everybody's cheerleading on the sidelines, clapping on the sidelines, doing a backflip and dancing on the sidelines in celebration. If they were so race loyal, why are you celebrating every time your sisters get with a European? Because you're not race loyal. You're a fake fraud and a phony counterfeit fake. And get out my face. You know the type of women who are really race loyal, who are really loyal to their culture and their background and their lineage? Jewish women. Arab Muslim women. Those women are truly race loyal and they don't got to grab a microphone and say it a thousand times a day. They walk the walk. They don't got to talk the talk. You see with the fake pro-black women, it's all about the rhetoric, running their goddamn mouth. Yap, 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 blah, 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 yap, yap, yap. But their actions never match the rhetoric. The Jewish woman, she don't got to say nothing because the actions back up the rhetoric. She don't got to say nothing. Everybody knows what it is. But when it comes to the fake fraudulent pro-black woman, everybody knows you a fake fraud and a phony. Everybody can see it. Everybody knows you a, you a fake fraud and a phony. All you do is talk, 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 but you don't walk the walk. You don't back it up. You a fraud. And I came back and I said this. You're not race loyal. And I'm still rejecting y'all for the double-minded hypocrisy. And she said this. Compared to black men, that's my point. On a whole, black men date out more than black women. Much more. And you know that. If black women are not race loyal, black men are definitely not. Now, let's stop right there. Keep in mind, the subject of the video is the manipulation tactics of the fake pro-black female. Let's go back to the survey. The question that I asked my audience had nothing to do with who is more race loyal, who is dating who. I said, is it wrong for black men to reject black women who talk pro-black and sleep white? I basically said, is it wrong for black men to reject women who are liars, who are frauds, who are phonies, who are double-minded, who play both sides, who are double agents? Is it wrong for a black man to reject a woman who has no integrity and does not back up what she says? Is it wrong for that? And she switched the conversation to who black men are dating even though there is no data that is being collected by any government agency on who black men are dating she pulled that information straight out her butt cheeks and instead of arguing my original point now the conversation has switched to who black men are dating as always the conversation always switches to what black men are doing they never can stay on task because like i said it's the manipulative nature of the fake pro-black female and unfortunately most of y'all boys are too dumb to pick this up but i'm not dumb bro i can see what it is now i gotta take my brothers to class real quick the propaganda and the rhetoric being used by these fake pro-black women is used for two specific reasons. Number one, to manipulate you. Number two, to seduce you. I gave you an example of manipulation with my interaction with that lady in the comment section. An example of seduction would be somebody like Ebony K. Williams. And the situation surrounding Ebony K. Williams is so crazy because, in my opinion, she represents the majority. She represents the 85% that I talk about. She was about to get married to a white man. It didn't work out. And then she came back around with a book entitled Bet on Black. In fact, you could say Ebony K. Williams represents both the manipulation and the seduction of the fake pro-black female. Let's take a look at what her book is all about. Directly from Amazon, Ebony K. Williams knew that an important part of her mission as a media personality would be to unabashedly place blackness on a pedestal. Williams has long known that blackness is a rich, expansive place that centers resilience, excellence, beauty, panache, and brilliance. But these notions of blackness have long been distorted by American racism, where for generations, black folks have been expected to live a subordinate, second-class existence in the country they call home. No more, says Ebony K. Williams. 
proclaiming that the good news about being black today is that our community has unprecedented access to an array of tools to honor our blackness. However we see fit, whenever we see fit, wherever we see fit, bet on black is a call to action for black people all over the world to adopt a fresh, highly informed mindset that will change lives. She delves into some of the cornerstones of leading a first class black life, including don't let anyone make you their black sidekick. Carry your blackness proudly everywhere you go. Subvert stereotypes and do you. Disrupt oppressive power structures. No need to code switch. Show up as beautifully as you are. Get together. Black community is invincible when we get together. Now imagine a damn black man who was about to get married to a white woman during the George Floyd fiasco putting out a book talking this bullshit. Imagine the backlash that would be received by these fake pro-black women. They would call him a fraud. They would call him a fake. They would say he's a phony. You run around with white women. But when they do it, don't nobody bat an eye. Don't nobody say a word. I'm going to say a word, but don't nobody say a word. They so race loyal. They so pro-black, but they never, ever, ever call out their sisters for the fraudulent, inconsistent, counterfeit, fake behavior they exhibit on a constant basis that the entire world can see. And in fact, just to jog your memory, I'm going to play some clips from her interview at the Breakfast Club so you can see the audacity of these fake, fraudulent, counterfeit, pro-black females. Let's get into it. Run the footage. Talking about all this, this brother this, and the black man this, and the white supremacy this, and this, that, and the other. Entrepreneurship is the key to me. That's not just me talking. That's Earl Graves Sr., the, 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 the founder and visionary of black enterprise. I'm talking about black enterprise, black ownership, and black liberation. And it is important to me. A, it's, it's in my DNA. Mm -hmm. and, and, and I'll be honest with you, right? And one of the comments that I said, and, and, and maybe I'm not sure, right? The guy was like, he was like, you talk about all this about lifting the brother up and lift it, lifting this up and white supremacy and, and what you do for our people. And then the first thing the brother said was, but your fiance was white. And I'm sitting there like, how, how do you talk about how much you uplifting and how much you're going for black people? But that's not necessarily what you're even looking for. I believe in ownership, entrepreneurship, and multiple streams of income as a way tethered to our liberation as black people who were brought here in chattel. And I was devastated when my good friend, uh, Eugene Scott, sent me a post, a Washington Post article that said black men are going to HBCUs one to two. It's two to one for black women graduating. So these are things we gotta look at because you have daughters and you have daughters and some of y'all in here got daughters. And if they're gonna wanna partner and marry men mm -hmm. and black men at that, and they're gonna wanna build together as you two cite your marriages as examples of, we gotta, we gotta talk about how people can be equally yoked. <sighs> now, like I said, as somebody who doesn't date outside my race, I get absolutely disgusted when I hear these fake pro-black women open their goddamn mouth. I wish I would stop talking forever. I wish I would go to another race of men and try to run game on them. Stop trying to run game on black men. Leave us the hell alone. Leave us the hell alone forever. God damn. You're a double talking, double minded, schizophrenic, double agent, and we don't need you within our ranks. We don't need you within our midst. You provide nothing of value. Now, yesterday in my video, the video went crazy, all right? In fact, I think my video got more views than the original video put out by Dr. Umar. That's crazy. Now, in a comment that I pinned to the top, I said this. Ebony K. Williams says she desires a black man of elite status and she's entitled to her preferences and standards. But my question is this, why should successful black men have to date fake pro-black women who talk black and sleep white? Does she think successful black men work hard in life to marry the white man's trash? She is delusional and successful men are not buying the nonsense she's selling. Now, I don't think it was wrong for me to say that considering the topic was about preferences, standards and opinions. She's entitled to her standards and successful black men are entitled to our standards. Do you agree? I think it's fair on both sides. Now let's jump into some of the comments in the comment section because that video went crazy last night. This lady came in and she said this. So let me get this straight. It's okay for a black man to hold out for a high value woman like Kevin Samuel said, but this woman who is an attorney should date a bus driver. I said the same thing. Why should successful black men have to date fake pro-black women who talk black and sleep white? She's a fraud trying to run the pro-black hustle and we ain't buying it. She came back and said this. It's nothing fake about her. She was honest. She doesn't want a bus driver. She's a high profile lawyer. She wants someone that matches her income, not someone struggling. Personally, I'm glad she spoke the way she did and she should never apologize for what she said because it was facts and the truth just hurts sometimes. I came back and I said this. I'm going to ask you again. Why should successful black men have to date fake pro-black women who talk black and sleep white? Successful black men work hard in life to marry the white man's trash? She came back and she said this. Who said that's what she wants? Or are you just assuming that? 
In case you haven't noticed, successful black women are choosing themselves. They are not in that box anymore. Once upon a time, a woman's worth was based on her having a husband. That's not the case anymore. Now, brothers, going back to the title of the video, the manipulative tactics of the fake pro-black female. You notice I asked the question three times and I have yet to get a single answer. The first two times she said, Ebony K. Williams, she wants a high profile man, an elite man, a man of high status, a man of high caliber. And I did not deny that. I did not refute that. I did not push back against that. I simply said, why should that man be forced to relegate himself, be forced to settle for the white man's trash after a lifetime of putting himself in a position of high status? That's the prize at the end of the finish line, the white man's garbage. After all those long days, long nights, grinding, broke, trying to make it. At the end of the day, at the end of the long journey, we're supposed to end it by marrying the white man's trash and spending the rest of our life with the white man's trash. And because she knew she could not answer my question in an honest manner, she decided to switch the conversation and say, listen, we don't want to get married. We don't want to have husbands. The first two times she said, we want a man of high status, high caliber that match our income and our status. And then once I said, listen, why should a successful man settle for this trash? And then it became, we don't want to get married anymore. The manipulative tactics of the fake pro-black female. You'll never get an answer to any of your questions. You'll never get an answer because they're trying to run game. And when they realize they can't run game, they retreat. They run for the hills. They, they duck for cover because they know they're full of shit, my brother. They're full of shit. They're full of shit, bro. Literally full of shit. Like a clogged up toilet. They're full of shit. And towards the end, once I realized that, listen, she's trying to run game. She don't got an answer for me. I said this. I'm glad that we are both in agreement that successful black men deserve better than to settle for the white man's trash. And let me tell you, brothers, I probably asked at least 20 different women in the comment section last night the same question. And do you know, I never got a single answer why successful, high powered, elite status black men should settle and get married and provide for the white man's trash. None of them provided a single logical and coherent answer because they know there is no logical answer. They know a successful black man deserves a hundred times better than to settle for the white man's garbage. Now, let's continue. This lady came in and she said this. What exactly is so crazy about a millionaire woman saying she wouldn't date a bus driver? You're out of your minds. You're crazy for wanting a woman to lower herself just to make a group of broke, violent, emotional men who are known for not taking care of their children comfortable. I didn't I didn't debate anything she said. I just simply said the same thing. Why should successful black men have to date fake pro black women who talk black and sleep white? She's a fraud trying to run the pro black hustle and we ain't buying it. I didn't get emotional about any of that other nonsense she said because it doesn't apply to me. All right. My father's a millionaire. My mother makes twenty thousand dollars a year. I mean, it is what it is, bro. Like all that nonsense, that propaganda, it don't apply to me. I don't date outside my race. I don't chase the white women. So that propaganda, find somebody else to run game on, baby girl. It don't work on me. I'm going to ask the same question. Why should successful, high-status black men deal with the white man's trash? There is no answer. A black man deserves better than that, and they know that. Next comment. This is the same lady from before that tried to run game and ended up changing the subject. She came back and she said this. I think Ebony desires a wealthy man. He doesn't have to be black, or at least that's not a deal breaker. I came back and I said this. She was on the radio talking about black liberation and chattel slavery. So now we have to hold her accountable for talking black and sleeping white. There are too many women who operate with this double-minded mentality. It's an epidemic and it's a mental disease. Next comment. This lady came in and she said this. Heartstrings pulled on rich successful men or the broke oppressed ones. Y'all the only ones crying about the white man keeping y'all down when faced with your low production in life. Now listen, in the video last night about Dr. Umar Johnson and Ebony K. Williams, I had said these fake pro-black women when they talk all that, when they talk about that black power, the black community, the black society, chattel slavery, our ancestors on the slave boats and the sugar plantations. I had said the only reason they talk that bullshit is to manipulate black men and pull on the heartstrings of successful, responsible black men who love their people because they know that type of rhetoric is going to pull on the heartstrings of a black man that loves his community, loves his people. And that is the art of seduction. That is standard manipulation. Ebony K. Williams was laying up, about to get married by a white dude, about to get married to a white dude. He dumped her, threw her in the trash, and now she's coming around back to black men trying to lecture us and talking about the black community, putting out books called Bet on Black, Bet on Black, but you sleeping with white. Stop talking about this bullshit, man. And like I said, these women, they don't know me. They don't know my background. They don't know my family history. I don't need to brag on my family's accomplishments or achievements. It doesn't matter. I'm just simply going to say the same thing I've been saying. Do you think successful black men work hard in life to marry the white man's trash? That's the prize. That's the prize at the end of the finish line. 
and she did not answer none of them could answer it bro hopefully they could come into this video hopefully some of you fake pro black women get into the comment section and give me an answer because I'm, I'm still waiting for an answer i've asked about 20 of y'all the same question and i still have no answer because i know y'all have no answer because y'all know y'all can't run game on me y'all can't run game on your boy man you can't run game on nefakari desaline man run game with them dumbass niggas you be sleeping with don't run game with nefakari desaline okay my brain the neurons in my brain they fire they fire properly and they fire at a rapid pace okay i can critically think unlike the black man you be dealing with i know you full of shit i know you run a game let's continue next comment this lady said i love her for telling her truth we all have a choice and that is hers i'm not sure what the fuss is about as an educated ambitious woman i get it i said the same thing this is the other side of the argument why should successful black men have to date fake pro black women who talk black and sleep white do you think successful black men work hard in life to marry the white man's trash and of course no response next comment <laughs> now this brother came into the comment section and he said this i love when you said they want to run off with christopher columbus and george washington and then when they kicked them off the mayflower they want to run back to nat turner and booker t washington man listen man listen we know you fake we know you fake fraud phony man get out of here man you counterfeit as a seven dollar bill we don't want nothing to do with that and the brother at the bottom he said this when they get kicked out the big house and land back on the field they start trying to kick knowledge and that's a fact everybody can see y'all full of shit next comment this lady said this when will i see a popular video or podcast that's totally black male based discussing financial issues with solutions when will brothers say to another i want a wife and i want my wife to work for me not putting her energy into another man's dream i guess if you have the modern mindset of 50 50 leaving man home while women work and complaining emotionally instead of logically this disorganized rhetoric will continue thank god my dad uncles brothers and nephews feel ashamed to hear the men of today they say what they mean allow women to react emotionally and stand firm on what they said prior to her becoming emotional and things get done now listen i'm not debating none of y'all i'm gonna ask the same question until i get a response so you think successful black men work hard all their life to provide for the white man's trash successful black men are not in a rush to wife up women like ebony k williams she is disqualified and of course no response because there is no logical response you're full of shit and you know it next comment this lady said black men are insane you have the kanye west the tiger woods the michael jordans who talk black but are married and give away millions to non-black women where is the outrage what of the snow bunnies who are only with these men for money yet there is smoke for ebony black men can kick rocks tiger woods is pro-black michael jordan is pro-black kanye west is pro-black just say i love white men instead of dumping this garbage in my comment section so you think successful black men work hard all their life to provide for the white man's trash you're a comedian just like your girl ebony try your comedy routine on somebody else i'm not impressed and of course no response because just like the rest of them you full of shit like a clogged up pipe next comment this lady came into my comment section and wrote an entire dissertation she said this it's her preference i mean really what will a college educated lawyer entertainment personality have in common with a bus driver what will they talk about what interests, experiences will they share? What will their home life be like? People are attracted to and align themselves with common interests and compatibility. So what does someone working a nine to five talk about with their so-called elite partner? I've dated down and we have nothing to talk about, nothing in common. The only thing was sex. Yeah, physically, you'll be attracted to you're attracted to, but you cannot sustain a relationship on just sex. When you meet someone who went through similar struggles of education, college, employment, ownership, you relate much better. That's why Ebony brought up C's and D's. If you are okay in school making C's and D's, you will never understand the stress of being an honor roll, National Honor Society, Magnum Cum Laude student. When you meet someone who has accomplished the goals, or at least attempted, you align better. You are like-minded. When you both know what it takes to make it through corporate America and handling high-risk stakes on their job, not just clocking in and out, it's different. Compatibility matters. Many are not going to agree, but you know it's true. Ebony is stating facts. Black women outnumber black men in college. Earning higher incomes, false. But the black race is still at the bottom of the totem pole when compared to other races. To grow the black community, black men have to catch up to black women. Now, like I said, these women, they don't know me. They don't know my background, my family history. They just come into my comment section and automatically assume I'm some low-level, dusty bum with nothing going on in life. 
but these are the same women that will call themselves pro-black. Now listen, I guarantee I had a higher net worth at the age of 10 years old than they will ever have in their entire life. I was riding in the back of 7 Series BMWs and G-Class Benzes getting dropped off at private school in the third grade. So stop talking to me about none of this bullshit. Stop it. And I asked the same question. Do you think successful black men work hard in life to marry the white man's trash? That's what our parents sent us to school for? Are you drunk? Successful black men have nothing in common with black women who date white men. That's automatic disqualification. And of course, no response because there is no response. They're full of shit and they know it. Now, another brother came into the comment section after me and he said this. Black men own more businesses, make higher average salaries, make more when both are college graduates, are married more than black women, despite there being fewer black men. Y'all keep posting these lies about black men. The shit you're saying is not true and the evidence is readily available. Black men are not tolerating the lies and the BS anymore. We ain't letting it slide. Now, listen, I didn't want to debate it. I don't really care. I, I, I don't really care to debate with these fake pro-black manipulative con artists. It is what it is, man. But shout out to the brother for holding it down. Salute to you, bro. Next comment. This brother said, what kills me is the name of her book is Bet on Black. And I said, betting on black and sleeping with white. Typical fake pro-black con artist. Now, listen, that video went absolutely crazy. That video went crazy. I don't even understand how I got more views than Dr. Umar Johnson himself, but it is what it is, man. It is what it is. And big shout out to Donna Samir from the Search for Uhuru YouTube channel who came into my comment section a couple hours ago. Hey, shout out to big bro, man. Shout out to big bro. I've been watching you for years bro so i'm very honored i'm very honored that you tapped into the channel much love big bro that's the third major youtuber from black youtube that showed me love the first one being tiny tko as you know she got over 200,000 subscribers o'shea duke jackson he got over 300,000 subscribers and search for uhuru over 100,000 subscribers so big shout out to donna samir i'm very honored bro you already know but anyways man if any of y'all could come into my comment section and answer my question should successful black men be forced to settle for the white man's garbage? Anyways, it's your boy Nevercari Desaline back in the building. Yes, indeed. Like, share, subscribe, cash app in the description. And I'm gone. Peace. Reincarnated, I'm back in original fashion. I left on a horse and came back in that ass. And I left with abundance and came back to famine. We used to be pyramids, now we be rapping. Look how the mighty have fallen. Used to be running, now we be walking. When you be cooning, that's when they applauded. Selling your soul, your sons and your daughter. Gotta come up in this shit. They stuck in the mix. Really, my heart would be breaking. That's why I'm stacking that paper and handle my business. Pass it down in generation. Talking about money and power and building a nation. That's a deadly combination. Never be watching the TV, they pushing the genders. Falsifying information. Now they got mad. Intentions, step in the room and I'm feeling the tension. Enemy watching me blocking my vision. Get for the check, cause I need my redemption. Building my kingdom, I need it protected. Ready for war like a young money Congo. Never decided the team is the motto. Up in the crib and I'm whipping up waffles. Up in the crib and I'm smoking gelato. I'm chilling, I'm taking my pain and make it ambition. I'm blessed by the gods, but I ain't religious. I came for the power, they came for the bitch. They make a no hour with it. Wage, I got business. This is an art and it can never be taught. Selling my soul, I can never be bought. Play with my money, I see you in court. Run to the check and I do it for sport, Babylon falling, I go to the source, packing my luggage and go overseas, shorty be with me and she so at least, shorty be chosen, I'm calling her Hershey, secret intelligence probably gonna murder me, don't fuck with brands cause nigga I'm Haitian, say the wrong shit and you're smacking their faces.